Good morning. I am off to the smallest county in England today, Rutland, and to the county town of Oakham. But I also want to talk to you about the reasons why I think it's not too late to start over and reinvent your life. Whether you're 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, I can't talk for 60s and 70s because I'm not there yet. Let's go. So I've been journaling this morning around why it's never too late to start over in your 50s. But I think it would apply equally if you're in your 40s, 60s or 70s. I genuinely do because I don't think it's anything to do with age, not really. I think it's more to do with mindset and how we think about ourselves as we get that bit older. Just while I'm having this little soiree in the car with you, I can at least tell you about my reinvention. So to give some context to where I'm coming from, I knew I was getting a bit restless in the job that I was doing and it was a job that I really enjoyed. I was a learning advisor, so I was helping servicemen and women and civilian personnel who worked for the Ministry of Defence. So I worked for the Ministry of Defence for a long time and I worked for a long time with the Air Force. Re really lovely job, I enjoyed it and I think I was pretty good at it. But I was getting restless. There was a, a bit of a funny atmosphere in that department at the time. It was a little bit toxic at times and it wasn't a very pleasant place to work in the end and I, I made the move to a different department still within learning and development and I spent two years there before I made the decision to basically quit my job and start start up on my own and I was very fortunate to be able to take that time and give up my job to navigate this roundabout. There's an ambulance there. I hope nobody's hurting. reason that I think your 50s is a great time to reinvent yourself is because although our knees and our joints might creak a bit, our brains are still sharp. Notwithstanding the messy middle and that whole kind of brain foggy thing as we go through menopause, but on the whole our brains are still sharp and our brains are vibrant and our bodies are still vibrant and we've got a great opportunity to really focus if we haven't already on making this vessel that we live in that's going to see us out for the rest of our life the most useful it can be so while we've still got that vibrancy why not use it so we can thrive we've had over half a century by this point to gain knowledge wisdom experience skills and we can share those with the world. We are the elders of our community. So it makes a lot of sense that we would share that wisdom and that knowledge with other people so that they can get the benefit of our experience. They're probably gonna to have to live their life their own way too, but if we can just inspire, reassure, I don't know, just help the younger generations to realise that life is actually pretty good. 
the other side of 50 and it's nothing to be scared about. Such a level of ageism in the Western world. And I think we've got an opportunity now to reframe that for the younger generations coming through and role model what later life can look like, that it's not all walking sticks and mobility scooters, but actually that we have still got so much to add to the world. But we can only do that if we take action to show and role model that. By the time we get to our 50s and beyond, we've learned to understand and know our own mind. We're much less willing to take on all the bullshit that is out there. We have formed our opinions and we know what's right for us. And I think we get to the point where we are just done with trying to fit ourselves into a box. It's our time and we know our minds. I think one of the other things that happens when we turn 50 is that we get a real sense of our own mortality. And instead of feeling like we've got time to put things off, we realize, I think, that our time is now a, a commodity that we have to value so greatly that we have to make every day count because there are fewer in front of us potentially than there are behind us. So why would we waste any time now doing stuff that doesn't align with our true self and purpose and what we want from life? We've done our bit, we've given it. Now it's our turn to do things for us. And I think we also start to see some of our loved ones, friends, family, who aren't so lucky and don't make it. And that just reinforces that sense of mortality and makes us realize that if we don't do this now, then when? And I think that's such a, an important life lesson. I would say to anybody watching this who isn't in their 50s, who maybe is in their 20s or 30s, you don't have to wait till you're 50 <laughs> to get this lesson. Life is short for all of us. I did hear a saying a little while ago that it's not that you only live once, you only die once, but you get to live every day. So why not start living from today and not wait until you're in your 50s? But if you are in your 50s, don't leave it any longer. Really start thinking about what it is you want from life today. Of course, not every day can be a fairy tale, but I think we can start to take out some of the stuff that is really not what we want and just focus on the things that bring us joy. Because if we focus on the things that we have control over and make that those bring us joy, then the things that we have to do, we have a responsibility for, and we all have those. We can't live a life where everything in life is, is great. But if the vast majority of our time is spent doing things that bring us joy, then we've got more energy, more capacity, more mental space for those challenges that come up, like caring for relatives or for you know events that happen that are unpleasant, and they do happen in life. But we don't have to live permanently in that unpleasant space. We can decide to make the majority of our lives the way we want them to be. I think another thing that happens as we get older, well, boy and a dog and his mum, uh, another thing that we realise I think as we get older, at least I did, is that material things are so much less important than we probably gave them credit for as we were, you know, young, when we were younger. In fact, I see so many people really stripping back all of the material stuff and minimalizing their lives and although it's not something I've started to do from a material point of view in terms of decluttering and getting rid of stuff I've certainly stopped buying as much stuff we don't need it I, I want experiences now I want to do things that bring me joy
all of the time. Not just. Walk sideways, not forward. Sideways, sideways. No, you walk sideways. I'm so sorry, I got distracted by dogs and children. <laughs> I also think we have a different type of confidence as we get older. I think when we're younger, we have the confidence of youth. But as we get older, that confidence changes. And I think we have a confidence built on the knowledge that whatever happens, whatever life throws at us, we know we'll cope. We know we'll handle it because we've got to this age and we've handled everything that life has thrown at us. We must have done because we are still here and we are still still going, you know? So we get this confidence that there is nothing that life can throw at us that we can't handle. And that confidence is powerful. I think as well, we start to realize that if we do want things in life, then we've got to make them happen. We can't wait for other people to do it for us because we, we don't have necessarily enough time to wait for other people to make it happen. So we have to start to take the action to get the outcomes that we want. And that's okay, because we've got the confidence we need now, so we can do that. And we can do a lot of that because for many of us, we have greater time freedom. If we've had children, they're probably older, maybe grown up, maybe flown the nest. And even if they haven't, they're not as reliant on us. We've got more time for ourselves. We might have responsibilities for, for other older relatives, but on the whole, I think for many of us, we've got a freedom that we didn't have when we were younger. Quite often we've got less financial responsibility. We have more disposable income, especially if we're minimalizing on the material stuff. So we can afford to spend a bit more time thinking about what we want and being a bit more discerning about what we want from our lives. One of the best things I think about being a Gen Xer or a boomer to an extent is that we grew up with emerging technologies. We've had to learn them as we've gone to stay up to date. The younger generations have had them almost from birth so They've not had to learn them as, uh, in the same way. It's been more um, sort of inherent in them, a bit like learning your native language is always easier than learning a second language. So they've learned about technology in a native way, whereas, whereas we've had to learn technology like a second language. We've had to learn to adapt and we've had to learn to embrace technology. So we know we've got those skills we know we've got that ability to learn new things but we sometimes forget that i think as we get older but if we're wanting to make a new start in our 50s we can't afford to let new technology stop us because we've already proven that we can learn this stuff because we've been doing it all of our lives i think quite often we get stuck in a rut and it feels like there's no way out. But one of the things that I think can rejuvenate us as we get older is to find a renewed sense of purpose, to find new passions and to find new ways of showing up to the world. And I think this sort of messy middle in our 50s is a great time. It's like we throw all of the, the eggs up in the air and we, we wait to see how they fall. And then we get to choose how we want those eggs to, to look. <laughs> I don't know why I've used an egg analogy. I'm sure there's a better analogy than that. But there are so many different ways you can do eggs. And maybe all your life, all your life you've been a poached egg and now you want to be a bit scrambled. <laughs> I don't know where this analogy is coming from. <laughs> I hope you get the point. I also think we, our perception of age is different when we hit our 50s. You know, in our 20s, 50 seems very, very old. And I remember 60 just felt ancient. But I think when we reach this age, we realise that actually we feel so young still. I don't know about you, but I often look back and I think, God, I don't 
I don't remember when I was meant to grow up. <laughs> I don't recall if I ever did. And we assume, I think, when we're younger, that everybody who's older has all their shit together and they, they, you know, they know everything because they're old. And actually, I think for many of us, we don't. And we have a different perspective, perception, or a different perception, I'll try that again, of what age is. And 50 is no longer old. It still feels very young to me, although my knees, my knees are telling me otherwise. But our outlook is very, very young, I think, still. It's very easy, I think, to slip into the habits of old people as we perceive old people. But actually, if we still continue to think young, we'll continue to behave young. And that in itself will help us to live our, our best life going forward. And the final one, which I think is quite profound, if I say so myself, is that when you're young, you haven't experienced life. So you can only really guess at what life should look like going forward. But when we are older, when we, by the time we reach our 50s, we've got the benefit of hindsight. We can look back at what's actually happened. So we're not guessing anymore about what we want or what our life should feel like because we've already experienced it. And I think that gives us a really powerful perspective on what we want going forward. Because when you're just starting out in your adult years, you don't know any better. You don't know what good for you is gonna look like. Often we get set off on a path that we feel we should take. But by the time we get to 50, we are able to reflect back on our years and we can inform the future based on our experience of the past. We can't do that in our 20s. We can only base our future on assumptions and guesswork. And I think that's really powerful. That's why I think I love journaling so much because journaling gives me the chance to sit and just reflect and mull things over that in our busy lives, we don't always find the time to do. So I hope I hope there were a few nuggets in there that made you perhaps stop and think. And if you are a little bit younger and thinking, oh, 50s feels old, please don't. It's not. And you've got time now on your hands. You've got you know, time on your side, if you like, to start thinking now about what you want your next chapter to be. So maybe start planning for your financial future so you could put yourself in a position where you have choices in your 50s and 60s and 70s and if you're already there don't feel that you have to stay trapped there's always a way you can always figure it out sometimes it does mean big readjustments in life but that's okay you've handled it in the past you'll handle it again i would so love you to give me a like and if you're not subscribed i'd love you to subscribe to my channel it doesn't cost you anything and i'd be really grateful let me know in the comments what would you add to the reasons for why it's never too late to start over. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.